Hello and welcome to Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. My name is Drew, call sign AC3DS, and today I am glad that you are joining me for a discussion about power supplies. So if you're in the market for a power supply, it's maybe because you are just getting started into ham radio and well, you need one in order to power up your rig. So you've got two main choices, right? You've got the, the linear power supply and you've got a switching power supply. And, you know, without much experience working with either of these, it can be a little bit difficult to know which way to go. So let me kind of boil it down for you a bit here. So the linear power supply has three main pros. First of all, it is incredibly reliable. It is tried and true technology that's been around for a long, long time. It just works. Um, another pro is that it is quiet. Because it uses really big iron core transformers, um, it's just, it doesn't require uh, a lot of fans. Uh, using really large heat sinks, it's just, well, it's just quiet in terms of audible noise. There really isn't any. Unless you get into some uh, models that are probably up around 70 or 80 amps, um, you really just don't have any fans. And so it's nice. They're very nice and quiet. The other thing is that they generate no RF noise. And so when you're you know, using your radio, they should be generating no spurious emissions that you would then have to be you know, conscious of or that would be increasing your noise floor or just obstructing your experience in any way. So those are some of the, pro the, the, pros, the pros. Now the cons are that it is heavy and when I say heavy, this particular unit weighs about 27 pounds. So heavy, it is not a mobile uh, power supply really in any way, shape, or form. You don't want to be moving this around. Uh, another con is that it is a bit more expensive than its uh, you know, little, little brother here, uh, the, the switching power supply, um, by about $100. So it's a, a little bit more expensive. So let's talk about the switching power supplies. Now the switching uh, supply has several pros and cons as well. So the, let's talk the pros. It is lightweight. Uh, this power supply weighs about three pounds. Um, so really nice, easy to take out. If you are going to go and operate from another location, another person's house, or, or out in the field somewhere, but you do have access to uh, you know, plug into AC power, this works really, really well. It works perfectly fine in your home shack as well. Um, it's consistent, it's reliable, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. So in terms of pros, lightweight, uh, cost effective, again, about $100 less expensive than the linear, and again, very, very reliable. Um, now, as far as cons go, it is, it is more noisy in both regards. Now, let me clarify that a little bit. So in terms of, uh, of audio in your in your uh, in your shack, right? Just being able to hear things and having general noise in your shack. Um, this has a fan in it, and so it's going to have the normal noise that a fan has, um, and that can be a little annoying at times if it's constantly running. So just be aware of that. Um, my preference is not to have this running all the time or the fan running all the time, um, and so that's why I don't use this in my shack. Um, I do use it for everywhere else and whenever I'm going mobile, which again, that's, that's one of the pros. It's, right, you know, it's really easy to take mobile. Uh, another con though is that because of their complexity, switching power supplies have a propensity to generate RF noise. That being said, the companies that make these know that they're making them for ham radio usage and you know, consequently they do a really good job of suppressing that RF noise. So generally speaking, you're not going to be experiencing much uh, of any RF noise. However, it is possible. If you read eHAM reviews, you're gonna find that there are, you know, there are cases where people register specific noise, RF noise. Um, and so that is a potential problem. All right, so you have to make a choice, right? But before you make that choice between linear and uh, switching, you should probably be looking at a few other things. Number one, the amount of amperage. So check and see how much your radio requires in terms of 
operating amperage for uh, you know a full signal. So my ICOM 7300 here, talking single sideband, um, produces, if I remember correctly, it's about 2122 amps, or requires about 2122 amps. And so I needed to make sure that I had an amp that could provide that. So this is a 35 amp power supply, and this is a 30 amp power supply. Both work perfectly fine for, for what I'm doing using the 7300. But you should check your radio and make sure that you know exactly how many amps it requires and, you know, get what you need accordingly. So that was number one, total amperage. Number two, you're going to want to look at the power poles or the other terminals or connectors that your radio uses and then what these power supplies use. So on the front of this MFJ power supply here, I have two round terminals. Uh, and in the back, I have uh, Anderson power pole terminals. Great diversity of you know, usability in terms of what, what I can attach to this unit. The Astron here, 35M, has round terminals in the back, which are great. And I actually added on some, uh, some Anderson power poles to make it a little bit more easy to hook into. Uh, I know that the new Astron 35M has the power poles right in the front, a double set of power poles in the front, which, you know, that's, that's, that's nice. Um, but, you know, just make sure that you're getting what you need for your particular application, for what your radio requires. Um, you can always adjust that, just so you know. You can always adapt and you can always modify to make it work for your needs, but just be aware of it. Um, the last thing is metering, right? So on the front of my 35M here, I can see the amps and the volts that it's drawing at any given time. And I like this. I like to know this information. Same thing here for the MFJ. I like being able to see that little bit of information to be able to, again, make informed decisions. Am I, you know, when I'm, when I'm keying up on my, um, on my radio, what's actually happening? Am I really producing? Am I really sending out uh, to what extent? It's good to have that little bit of information. That's my personal thought. You don't need them. It's not a requirement. And it does add a little bit of extra cost to the mix by having those uh, meters. But honestly, you know, for that extra 20 bucks or 30 bucks in the long run, you're, you'll be much happier having it already built in rather than guessing about what's occurring. So metering is really important. All right, so now that you know some of the other things that you should be looking at in a potential power supply, you've got to make a decision, linear or switching. So which way do you go? My recommendation would be this. If you have no prior experience working with a, a, a ham radio, uh, you have no experience with power supplies, go with the linear if you can afford it. Uh, the linear is rock solid. It's going to do really well by you for a really long time. And it's just, it's, it's a proven workhorse. Um, and also, because it does not generate any spurious emissions, it's going to be really nice to have in your shack to give you a really good solid baseline as far as, you know, your noise floor and general operating conditions. So really, really good solid choice here. If you're planning on going mobile though, and that's, this is the only caveat, if you're planning on taking your radio out and you're planning on going places and you know that right from the get-go, you know that in the first weeks or months you're going to be taking this thing on the road and you're going to be doing stuff with it on the regular basis and not using a battery, right? Like we're talking about taking it to another person's home, taking it to some place where you're going to plug it in. Um, then in that case, go with the switching power supply. Because as you're moving around often enough, the, you know, some of those little nuance features are going to be easily outweighed by the portability and the accessibility of having it um, you know, easily moved. So there you have it. Those are my recommendations. I hope that that helps. You really can't go wrong. You'll probably be fine no matter which way you go. So don't spend too much time or energy going crazy trying to, to nitpick this particular decision. There's plenty of other things in ham radio to, to nitpick on. This really isn't one of them. So with that, good luck. Let me know what you decide and what you ultimately land up getting. Um, and if anybody out there does land up getting the uh, Astron 35M with the power poles in the front, the new model that's just coming out now in 2021, let me know what you think about that as well. Thanks so much. Until next time.